For someone who was easily frightened, this boy spent a lot of time looking at things that some would call gruesome. He was thin, unkempt and scrawny, but a boy nevertheless, and he was standing outside of the haunted house by the edge of the dilapidated graveyard. He was walking slowly, allowing himself to be frightened, but as he was walking he was quickly eating at crisps. With each slow footstep he crammed more crisps inside of his mouth, but he would stay for ages at gravestones and delight in the details, the gory details, that would be carved into the stone that would tell of how the person who lay beneath the earth had died. But this was a graveyard that he did not usually go to, for even he, who loved to be frightened, would not go to. His dog had got lost, and now he was lost himself. It was cold, and he rubbed his hands against the jumper that his grandma had bought for him. He didn't really like it, but he was glad it was on his back, for it was keeping the cold chill away from him. But this house was horrifying, even for him. And even though he liked that salty electric taste on his tongue, when he was frightened, he did not like this house. It was frightful, spider-infested. And it was almost as if the crooked tower was staring down and looking at him. And as he stood there, in the shadow of the crooked tower, a dusty door cracked open. As a wind blew, a smell of rust filled the air. He shivered, for even his grand's jumper could not keep the chill that was right to the very centre of his bones away from his body. I suppose, if he had the chance, he would not have done what he did next, for he took a step closer towards the door, thinking that if the door could open by itself, then he would be able to open it, even if the wind was to slam it shut, and he would be able to run away from that place, and the amount of fear that he would feel would make him feel truly alive. As he walked towards that place, phone rang. It wasn't a mobile phone. It wasn't a phone that you would find in a modern day house. It was that old fashioned, it was an old fashioned jingling ring that echoed inside of the house. He was curious and his fear was overcome as he could see it, rattle in its cradle, moving this way and that, and that tingling, jingling, ringing sound was filling the air. He reached towards it and picked it up, and all he could hear was a long, slow, thin laugh. You shall become part of the house. He slammed the phone down. And it was then that he looked and he saw that the phone had a broken wire. It was not attached. And if he'd had any sense, he would have left. But the curiosity was inside of his soul. And he thought that this would be a good thing. And he would be able to scare everyone. For the, for the ghost stories that he always heard were never that frightening. But this real life ghost story was truly frightening enough. It was as he had slammed the, the phone back down into its old cradle that a small thin drawer opened and he could see that there was a small coffin shaped box inside of it. A coffin shaped box that was no bigger than your thumb and underneath that there was a map. All sense had gone now. He picked up the coffin shape box. He took out the map and looked at it. And he thought to himself, this is just a map of the house. And it showed 
the map of the house, the great stairs which had all broken, and even he was not going to risk gravity. But it showed that there was a brick. A brick missing. A brick missing in the dark cellar. He thought that he would go. He opened up the, the coffin-shaped box as he walked towards the cellar, following the map all along, and out he found that there was a ball, a small ball, which he raised up towards his eye, and there he could see, as if his eyes had become those of an insect, a hundred thousand different shapes that were taken from what his other eye could see. He could see uh, to the top of the roof. He could see towards the cellar door. But when he tried to remove it, he could not, for it had fallen in that place where his eye was. He still wasn't deterred. Down he went, and he thought that this was something that he could show his friends so that he would be able to look in every direction all at once and no one would ever be able to sneak up on him from behind. He would be able to look and he still had his one good eye. Down the stairs of the cellar he went and he could see that there was nothing behind without turning his head. He could see everything that was above, below and in front of him and down he went. There was a single shaft of light that came down through all of the doorways and here he heard the sound of a door slamming but he was undeterred and he rested his hand to where he found that place where the brick was missing and his hand slipped into the stone and his hand was pulled into that place and he was pulled inside of the house petrified. He could feel his heart stopping as he became a part of that house. The map as it fell to the floor no longer had a brick that was missing for he had become a part of the house.